What's going on, everybody? This is JD you Dig, aka NOJ Soccer 12, here once again to bring you an exclusive video for goalkeeper tips with a focus on 11v11 competitive pro clubs. If you are unfamiliar with 11v11 competitive pro clubs, you can go to www.fvpaa.com to sign up and start your virtual pro career. Okay, so this past season in ACL9 gave me a lot of great content to share with you guys. And if you haven't seen my first video, you can check it out on the FVPAA YouTube page. It's titled Goalkeeping with Your Dig. And it went over very basic scenarios that you will encounter as a goalkeeper in 11v11 competitive pro clubs. Alright, so a lot of people gave me good feedback on my last video asking me to do more intricate scenarios. And a good amount of those people were asking me to put something together regarding corners. So in this video, we will go over two more detailed scenarios that you will encounter as a goalkeeper in 11v11 competitive pro clubs. And the first one is one-on-one -on -one situations. And the second one by popular demand is how to deal with corners. And once again, don't forget to visit FVPAA.com to get involved. And with that being said, let's get started here with some one-on-one -on -one situations. In this first one-on-one -on -one save, we have Cavill playing a wide the Jape, slotting it through for Marvino as I come out, close down the angle, and make the save. Alright, so every time an opposing team is building up towards my goal, I'm going to scan the area in my peripherals, and what I mean by this is I'm looking around for the possible outcomes and opportunities that the opposing team has to score so I can react accordingly. So as you can see, when Japes plays this pass, I'm already coming out to close down the angle for one very good reason, and that is as soon as Marvino receives the ball, as you can tell, he has no player around him for an option to pass it or sweat it across or do something fancy. So he's got to take a shot quickly or he's going to get tackled by the defender. So mechanically here, I'm going to press Y to come out, close down the angle. And when I get close enough, I'm going to let go of Y, hold LB, and jam down on the right stick to make the save right here. In this next one-on-one -on -one save, in an ACL League match versus Retros, we have Equidt being played through trying to fake me out as I come out, close down the angle, and make the save. Alright, so once again here when the through ball is played, I'm already scanning the area. So when DT receives this pass, we can tell that there is no one around for him to play it to, leaving him with only one option, and that's to try and take me one-on-one. -on -one. So I come out, I pressure him, and I close down the angle, and I put him in a very awkward position where he is uncomfortable. So it's very important here that you are keeping your composure and looking for the red ring, because if you anticipate the player shooting, before the red ring appears and you flick the right stick, your goalkeeper will stutter step and leave you flat-footed with a worse chance of making the save. So when I take the ball off his feet here, you can tell that I don't bite to his fake shot. I keep my composure, wait for the red ring, and mechanically I'm going to hold Y, and then I'm going to rush him and flick right on the right stick to make the save right here. In this last one-on-one -on -one save here, we have a league match versus AO and ACL9 where Snayer receives a through ball into the box for a one-on-one -on -one situation where I get a piece of it and push it wide of the goal. Okay, so as Snayer receives the ball and turns towards goal, I am immediately pressing Y to rush him and close down the angle because I don't want to give him the time of day or the luxury of getting set and having a choice of shot. So the important takeaway here is that your reflexes have to be on point with coming out to rush and closing down the angle. So something that I've learned to do for myself is I hover my right index finger over Y all the time so I have a quicker reaction time if I need to come out and pressure in situations like this. The reason I do this is because as Snayer turns towards goal, he pushes the ball in front of his player, diminishing his control of the ball. So that's the exact moment that you want to come out and close the angle because it gives you the best chance of saving it. So as soon as I see him turn, I press Y, and as he takes a shot, I'm going to flick the right stick to the right to make the save right here. In this first corner save, we have Balo swinging a back post to Romani who flicks it back for Omar, takes a shot on goal, and I get down to make the save. Alright, so in every corner situation when the ball gets played in, I'm going to judge the trajectory of the ball to determine whether or not I should come out. So here I see the ball being played way back post, so I'm going to stay on my line. So as the ball reaches Romani, I have to make a call of whether or not it's going to be put on target or flicked back across. But here we get an indication from the trajectory of the ball that it is indeed being flicked back across. So a lot of the time in situations like this, it is difficult to make this judgment. But because I know my opponents and their tendencies, I know they are likely to flick it back post. So I'm going to stay on my line. So if you make a mistake and you flick the right stick, thinking it's going to be put on target when it's not, your goalkeeper will make a diving animation and then more than likely the opposing team will have an open net. So this is where experience comes in and your skills of how well you read the play becomes a factor. 
So as I judge that Romani is playing it back across, I'm going to slowly move over with LT. I'm not going to sprint because in my experience when I've tried that, I noticed that my goalkeeper won't have his stance set to make the save. So when I see the ball being played back across, I'm going to let go of LB, slowly move over with LT towards the center of the goal. And as I see the red ring appear around Omar's player as he takes a shot, I'm going to lock back on LB and then jam right on the right stick to make the save right here. In this next corner save, we have Oscar playing a short to Andresi. Slotting it through to Gozinho as he plays it across for Gringo, gets ahead on it as I get over and claim it. Okay, so this situation is similar to the last one where we have a cross being played in and it is our job to determine where the ball will end up so we can react accordingly. So a couple of things that I'm paying attention to here is who's in the box, more importantly where they are in the box, on top of monitoring what Gozinho is doing with the rock because sometimes when skilled players like him are in the box, they could potentially dribble the ball in closer and crack a shot at you hoping you're not expecting it. So you got to be aware of all these factors. So in this situation, I'm going to hold LB until I know for sure that he's going to cross it. And as he crosses it, I'm going to let go of LB. LB and once again slowly move over with LT towards the center of the goal and as I see the red ring appear around Gringer's player for the header I'm gonna flick right on the right stick to make the save right here. In this last corner save clip we have a friendly verse Joga Benito where a player crosses the ball in as I come out and punch it away. Alright so the reason I come out here and not in previous clips is because once again prior to the corner being taken I'm scanning the area to see who could potentially receive the ball. I noticed that there's only one player front post available to get on the end of this so I don't want to give him the option to flick it across. I want to come out right now and deal with this. Also if you pay very close attention to the area just outside my 6 yard box there's a yellow X indicating where the ball will land. So that's another reason why I decided to come out. Um, this honestly is just experience and my judgment of the play and how I read the situation playing out. Like I said earlier, I'm scanning the area to see the potential outcomes. So mechanically here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush with the Y button, and then I'm going to flick up on the right stick to punch it out and make the save right here. Thank you guys so much again for checking this out. If you have some material you would like to see me cover, drop a comment on the video. And as always, this wouldn't be a you dig special unless I had a montage of me locking people up. So enjoy that and don't forget to go to FVPAA.com. I'll catch you guys later.